Hello my dear chess friends and welcome to our new video. In that video I will present game played in Leiden in 1970 between our hero in that video course Mikhail Botvinnik and famous Danish Grandmaster Bent Larsen. Uh, game is very interesting and something a bit strange happened in the game so in some moment in the middle game it looks like uh, black achieved a lot and uh, had serious positional factors on its side but uh, definitely Botvinnik had only one positional factor uh, uh, in his favor while uh, domination on a file but that factor just prevailed other factors and gave Botvinnik almost smooth victory but let's now start with the game our hero Mikhail Botvinnik started with c4 he was master in English but here game switch to King's Indian and Samish variation that variation was popular highly in the middle of last century and in first half and uh, Friedrich Samish was the first who implemented uh, many important principles but later it was uh, played by many uh, strong grandmasters uh, with achieving the highest popularity in the middle of last century but in 1970 as we can see still that was regularly played bishop e3 a6 that is slow continuation generally like in all indian defenses uh, the black gives white comfort to make pawn center and uh, later tries with some pawn breaks to attack it maybe in king's indian sita c5 maybe e5 well maybe something else but in that position black played slowly he played a6 uh, waiting for a good moment to choose what to do that is low continuation uh, allowing black even third plan implementing that game well after queen d2 black played c6 okay idea of c6 is to play b5 uh, slow but playable here white is on crossroad he can prevent b5 with a4 but that allows black even a5 slow continuation with knight a6 and knight b4 and even c5 c5 is typical but maybe that works even better with including moves a4 and a6 uh, other continuation for white can be for instance bishop h6 that would be really logical uh, you know black plays slowly in queen side so white to waste time strike on the king side and go for your idea but in the game botany decided to play in some peaceful manner he played bishop d3 b5 knight ge2 and knight bd7 still everything is more or less normal castling and rook b8 black patiently builds his play on the queen side uh, maybe he will go for e5 uh, maybe even for c5 who knows everything depends on white setup and white immediately in that moment decided to determine the structure rook ac1 would be normal move because in any moment uh white threatens to open c file instead he decided to open it immediately maybe white should uh wait maybe black will take first on c4 but okay rook c1 uh was normal c takes b that helps black to follow main idea crushing white center and black play a b but now we see that botvinnik wanted to keep that rook on a1 after b4 to provide a4 so after knight b6 he voluntarily weakens his pawn structure on queen side making pawn b4 isolated and weak but you can see that after all that natural exchanges of bishop d7 natural move uh, still white should be preferable because of some uh, space advantage of course you know i prefer to uh, say in but in uh, gelfand manner that uh having more space than opponent still doesn't mean you have space advantage if your opponent has enough space but in that position i think uh black already has some problems because 
you need see his pieces somehow are hindering each other knight blocks the bishop uh, no good square to retreat d7 is taken rook f8 needs to be transferred so still black must work uh, a lot to re-establish harmony and coordination in his army that's why queen b6 was played normal move black wants to uh, connect rooks bringing some fresh air to rook f8 so that rook can be activated very soon and rook b1 was played okay after rook b1 uh what can black do rook fc8 normal move and here white played knight c3 other idea would be to play on king's side with h3 and f4 uh starting activities on king's side because black pieces are transferred to queen's side i'm talking about major pieces but the problem can be the white major pieces are also on the king on the queen side not affecting on the king side maybe rook a5 can affect but that is just a long story to predict that rook really will uh, work on the king side uh, what to suggest after h3 black can maybe go for crushing white central with c5 in some good moment Still, that is not the moment, but after some regrouping, maybe bishop somewhere in 97, maybe that moment will uh, arise. In our game, white was focused on queen side and logical. Okay, knight c3, queen d8, okay, maneuver, queen should be behind rocks, black prepares rook a8, maybe. Queen a2, very good move. Not only targeting the diagonal, who knows if there can be some problems for black after bishop c4 but also taking the file bishop e6 and now queen a3 over protecting the pawn and giving freedom to rook b1 to get a1 if needed and now black went for i must admit mistake after d5 black can be only in trouble after e5 what's the problem the problem is now that pawn restricts bishop and queen okay not knight knight will retreat soon uh you know no next move but the point is with d5 black makes himself weakness on c5 on c6 uh and comfortable spot c5 for white pieces making same time black bishops bad white bishop on e3 is bad but bishop on d3 works well and black's idea was actually after all that natural moves to treat that bishops but the point is that exchange of bishop would not be in black's favor so the question is why why he has most of pawns fixed on dark color like b4 d4 e5 black has more most of pawns fixed on light color like c6 d5 f5 and soon e6 so does that mean black bishop will be better than white counterpart well uh, rather formally yes but rather not why not black can play e6 and bishop f8 okay but that bishop can be met with maybe jumping with knight to c5 uh, in some moment after knights are exchanged black bishop would not be good uh, it would be formally attacking but how to attack pawns it can go to e7 d8 and still after bishop e2 that bishop attacks nothing on other hand white bishop waits for chance and can be used to invade after bishop d2 bishop a5 maybe or maybe bishop g5 invading by a king side in the game white played rook a6 improving the pressure and here black missed good chance to play knight b6 now few continuations can be knight b6 and for instance rook a7 e6 black should be okay here white is better because of uh controlling the file and putting pressure on c6 but black position is just stable uh other possibility can be queen c1 where still black is okay that diagonal uh can help white to play bishop g5 but there is nothing nothing more than that uh in our game rook c7 was played and after that white should play knight b2 that would be a good moment to transfer knight to d3 if black plays e6 bishop f5 
to defend that pawn and by transferring knight to d3 whitefield cements the position and allow to his major pieces to go for invading via a5 because pawn b4 will get necessary protection needed protection rook c1 was played white plays aggressively now rook a5 white must go back okay e6 bishop d2 bishop f8 and f4 for some reason white cements the situation if you ask me what if f6 why not f6 well the problem is white bishop will get after ef dangerous and monster diagonal where it will dominate and that's why black didn't want to allow that diagonal to white he delays f6 which should be on agenda generally but after f4 okay now f6 uh, will give nothing to black of course bishop is moved f4 king h8 and knight c5 sooner or later that would be must but here black must get a decision to take with knight or with bishop if black takes with bishop he took with knight if black takes with bishop i'm pretty sure white will again take with d that is excellent move why excellent looks fatal mistake yes that is excellent move because white bishop cements position and can be used eventually on king's side to attack the king on other hand black d5 pawn is passed but no action with it but black main problem remains knight knight can go there but what after this there is so long journey needed to transfer knight to d5 key factor in that position is white domination on the file and white will just uh, go for action there exchanging probably queens with activating king b5 advance should be on agenda and with lack of space black will probably co just collapse on the queen side black decide to take with knight okay and still d takes c5 i'm pretty sure black just misevaluated that move black hoped white will do b eh? b takes c but then you know if opponent dominates on the file you can do two things one is to neutralize that by uh, preventing invading or by setting rooks to exchange opponent rook on dominating on the file and another plan is to open another file where you can get counterplay so that would be good for black of course if i takes b because black will get b5 okay but d takes was played queen d8 maybe intending to get h4 but there is nothing queen d3 queen there controls both situation on queen and on king side blocks the pawn and white is ready to invade with his rooks and formally black has better rooks uh, better bishop sorry formally black has better structure because white pawns white has backward pawn on b4 and black has passed pawn on d5 strange situation just imagine position with only major pieces on the board black would be perfect and more than perfect because b4 backward pawn would be under attack and black will have passer on d5 but adding formally bad bishop to white and formally good bishop for black will just drastically improve situation for white now black is almost paralyzed he can just sit and watch and wait for white's activity and to watch how white just uh <coughs> how white's initiative is growing up rook cb7 rook a8 neutralizing pressure and invading now white eliminates the pressure and queen a3 why not queen a6 maybe white was afraid of rook b4 but okay queen a4 targeting and now white invades rook a3 preparing invading on other side was the invading maybe rook g3 we transferring queen there black must play very accurately right now h6 okay making spot h7 for a king clever but now okay rook, queen, rook threatened h6 was played now black doesn't have bishop h6 resource which is not significant but okay queen a8 rook b8 queen a5 and finally queen a6 uh what can black do 
bishop e7 was played and finally white trades queens i would try with queen d8 as black but i'm pretty sure that would not help because finally after queen a7 white can play queen a8 and rook a6 will be very dangerous and annoying in uh, in view of the rook b6 possibility bishop e7 was played and now the rest of the game botvinnik plays mm. i think just superbly first task always in activating the king white provokes h5 very important now that pawn can be targeted with h with rook h3 in some moment king e2 and now king g7 king must stay there to protect the pawn uh, what if black allows g4 well if black allows g4 he will be in trouble there is something like this possible or white can do even if he wants even if he wants something like h3 first and g4 then uh h3 gen probably not because black will play h5 but that still remains as possibility after g4 main line okay white has even <coughs> Uh, rook h3 possibility here after check king goes there and still black is in trouble uh, because white can play on both wings h5 king e2 king g7 and now bishop e1 very important moment bishop is better there who knows after rook h3 if black will play h4 so white wants to be ready immediately to take that pawn and after king g6 okay now king is uh far from queen side and now white strikes there black king is deflected and now white organizes play on the queen side what's going on bishop d8 bishop c3 h4 king d3 if needed after king h5 white can do even h3 so that's why black played h3 and now question for you is how to continue what would you do as white uh, generally rook a2 is not an option because if you want to play rook a2 it is better to take you will have two pawns so to take or to play g3 game so g takes h3 and i like that approach i really think that is better and safer who knows uh after g3 if black king can invade via uh well, h5 and g4 don't give black that possibility after gh uh, you keep opponent forced to take care on both wings if black goes with king there for instance okay their plan can be even bishop e1 with advancing that pawn so black is somehow in that moment stretched and he must uh, play with scattered pieces which might must cover situation of both wings uh, after g3 there will not be such possibility and black king can go just to queen side to uh, help rook and bishop white long journey will be possible king e2 king f3 with g4 but still okay black will have possibility to do two roads for his king g takes safer and simpler bishop h4 is good king e2 and bishop d8 if you ask me what about rook b7 and b5 question is simple after rook b7 and b5 he will take and how to advance c pawn white needs somehow to invade with king via a4 and with king to play to take on b5 first no need to rush white tried with king on the king side bishop h4 something like this okay i think that moves were done to get time control after move number 60 after move number 60 game will be adjourned and uh, players will together with uh, friends and their teams if there are teams uh find uh good continuations for uh tomorrow when the game would be continued f6 and ef6 would be also good but okay king f3 why this move 
Effie, Effie, White felt that would be good for him. Rook c7, Rook a8. Now Black must suffer. I think his decision to play f6 was uh, a bit silly because opening the position will not help Black. Now his bishop works, his king works, but there is problem with c6 and d6 pawns which are discovered and White easily can combine attacking by them. Uh, h5, step by step, if Black takes, Bishop d2 ends the game. White squeezes Black more and more. Now Pawn is on h5, Rook a8, don't give Black the file. Rook a6, who knows, maybe b5 will be motive to take on e6. And that happened. But not with this, just to suck the Pawn. And now that would lead, lead to win. Bishop a5 and c7. What happened is this, finally b5, white found the plan, rook e6, black must not take on c5 because bishop falls. After bishop c1, bishop b4, d4, rook g6, now rook d6, pawn is stopped, rook d7, e6, rest should be matter of technique, and here black just resigned. What's the point? Uh, black cannot stop white both pawns. Bishop b4 can be met with c7 and white wins. Really interesting game and really remarkable victory. What can be the conclusion? Let's see that game once again briefly. King sing in defense, black try with typical queen side play to organize something, but white just regrouped well and d5 was silly move which helped white to install peace on c5. After peace was installed on c5, I'm talking about knight of course, black is forced to get decision, he decided to give knight for knight, okay, matter of style, but after d takes, black is just in problem, because having better bishop, formally better bishop, actually not better bishop, having better pawn structure uh, is not relevant here, the key positional factor is domination of white on the A file. And what is the conclusion? Uh, sometimes file is really the most important positional factor, yeah. Queen A3, Queen A4 not allowing black any sacrifice in surprise on B4. Now after some precise moves, black allowed exchange queens and that just helped white to uh, Convert, of course, after h5, after king f3, very clever move, provoking h5, after h5 is provoked, now black king must get king side position. <coughs> black try with advancing that pawn to get some counterplay, but there is nothing. White just neutralize that, and uh, after bishop is moved back for some reason, bishop e1. If black keeps with, uh, stays with bishop on h4, white can go for the same plan, rook a6 and uh, b and b5, for instance. So, bishop d8, bishop e1, now after f6, black decided not to wait anymore, it really looks forced sooner or later. So, king f3, I must admit there is nothing wrong with ef, of course. So, matter of style. White just advanced pawn and managed to advance it again. Uh, after fully improving pieces on the king side position, situation on the king side, white switches finally to queen side. But take a look on that instruction moment. <coughs> Check. King must defend the bishop. H4. Whatever black does, bishop e7, there is rook h8 with h5. <coughs> improving even the pawn. Forcing this. King goes back and now bishop is stuck, king is driven back and white pawn is dangerous, so much advanced and black doesn't have possibility again to act with king with king g6. After bishop g5, just rook a6 and finally it is time for decisive breakthrough, black pieces are stuck on the king's side and they will remain stuck because they must take care about white h passer. b5, taking and the rest is more or less beautiful organization. One, one more instruction moment, rook g6. 
if rook if king f7 then e6 and c6 and rook g8 definitely let me show you this now with that rook g8 comes if not that okay what to do again c6 ends the game so white kicks black king to h file and now rook d6 where now black king is so far and white just wins by force in that moment black resigned so my dear chess friends my final conclusion and my final advice for you will be uh, patiently evaluate the position patiently uh, precisely evaluate the position and do not rush uh, with uh, determining position as maybe Larsen did as better for you because you have formally better bishop maybe number one some other positional factors will prevail as happened in that game file was just more important positional factor and maybe even maybe even important uh, advice number two maybe your bishop would be just formally better not better in real black bishop was formally better because black had pawns on light squares white had pawns on dark squares but black bishop just was unable to attack anything white bishop with <coughs> his with its position on d2 cemented situation on queen side and on the king side as well stopped the passer and gave total freedom to white rook to maneuver left and right so conclusion is try to make which a decision on real and uh, relevant positional factors try to uh, get priority to positional factors because some of them are definitely more and some of them are definitely less important this time a5 was crucial factor and white won the game by using a5 with all his major pieces one rook was enough to finish the job that would be all for that video See you soon with new material. Bye-bye.